Hello and welcome to virtualtraining.us. My name is Devin Gandhi. Today I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu 12.04 on a Windows 7 virtual box. Same process can be used to install other operating systems such as Mac or Windows XP. What is Ubuntu? Ubuntu is a Linux-based operating system similar to Microsoft Windows. In recent years, Ubuntu has become a very popular alternative to Microsoft Windows. Unlike Microsoft Windows, Ubuntu is open source and free for everyone to use. It also offers the same, same look and feel as Microsoft Windows. So let's go ahead and get started and install uh, Ubuntu 12.04. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and download the Ubuntu 12.04 ISO file from uh, their website. So go ahead and open up the uh, browser and go to www.ubuntu.com. And once you're there, click on uh, Download in uh, Desktop. Now when you, when you get to the desktop page, there are two flavors of Ubuntu you can download, 12.04 uh, or 13.10. The 12.04 is a LTS, meaning long-term support release. What that means is Ubuntu community will continue to uh, release uh, updates and uh, patches on a regular basis until April of 2017. The 13.10 is only supported for nine months. So we're going to go ahead and install the 12.04. Now, depending upon your hardware, you can either download the 64-bit version of it or 32-bit version of it. I have the both one, both of those downloaded, so I'm going to go ahead and go straight to the uh, download. Uh, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and prepare our uh, virtual box for uh, Ubuntu. So let's go and click on New. Uh, give it a name. I'm going to call it Ubuntu 12.04. And it's going to go ahead and populate the type and the version for you automatically. Go ahead and click Next. Now here it's asking you how much RAM it should use. Uh, by default it's only 512. Uh, now again, it, depending upon how much RAM you have on your system, uh, you can go ahead and use uh, more or less. In my, uh, in my system, I have 8 gig of RAM, so I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to 2 gig. And go ahead and hit Next. Now it says, uh, do you want to go ahead and create the virtual disk now? By default, it's 8 gigabit, 8 gigabit of virtual disk. So we can go ahead and click Create. It's asking for type of virtual disk. We're going to go ahead and leave it default to the uh, virtual box disk image. Next. Now it wants to know if you want to go ahead and uh, dynamically allocate or fix size. What the fix size does, for example, let's say if you say I want to allocate uh, 10 gig of a hard drive space, it's going to reserve 10 gig uh, for, uh, for Ubuntu right away. Now when you say you want to dynamically allocate it, what that means is uh, if you say, hey, I want to reserve 10 gig of a hard drive space, but what it does, it go ahead and grabs, uh, grabs the amount of space it needs from the 10 gig of device pool, basically. So uh, if by default, for example, let's say it's only going to use 2 or 3 gig, then other 7 gig is uh, it's in reserve in the pool, which it will allocate from the hard drive when, as, as needed. So I'm going to go ahead and do it as a dynamically allocated and hit Next. So here, uh, by default, it's 8 gigabyte. I'm going to change that to 12 and hit Create. So it went ahead and prepared the environment for, for the Ubuntu 12.04. Now, a few things we need to do is go ahead and uh, make some changes to the settings. Now, on the General tab, uh, I'm just going to leave that default in the system. Here is where you can go ahead and uh, either add more RAM or reduce it as, as necessary. The thing that I was going to do here is uh, change the boot order. So I'm going to go to the hard disk first 
and move the CD-ROM second. And we don't, really, we don't really need the floppy here. The reason I moved the hard disk first is because hard disk is blank. So when we start installing the 12.04, it's going to go to the second uh, device in the boot order, which is the CD-ROM, DVD-ROM. Now here, I'm going to leave the display as is, storage. Now there are a couple of ways you can install Ubuntu. One is after downloading the ISO file, you can either burn it to the uh, CD or you can use the ISO file and use it virtually. So that's the method I'm going to use. So I'm going to click on the IDE, which is shows to be empty. Go down to the uh, choose the virtual disk files. I'm going to go and Now I'm going to go ahead and leave everything else the default. And hit OK. So if I start now, it should go ahead and boot from the ISO file. Uh, let me move this here. As you can see, it's booting from ISO ISO file right there. Go make it a little bigger so you guys can see it. And it should start the installation process uh, in just a minute. Okay, so it's asking uh, if you want to go ahead and try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. So I'm going to select install Ubuntu. Now here you can, if you have a high-speed uh, internet connection, you can go ahead and select the uh, you can select the download updates while installing, as well as install third-party software, which I'm going to go ahead and skip both of those for right now and hit continue. It says, uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to erase the disk and install? So go, I'm going to select the erase the disk and continue. It has a 12 gig of uh, virtual disk, so I'm going to go ahead and install. Okay, so while it's installing, it's going to ask you for the location so it can set the date and time zone. So I'm going to leave it as uh, Chicago, continue. Asking for the keyboard layout, I'm just going to leave it at default, hit continue. Now here it's asking for the name, so I'm just going to call it, uh, just a, I'll give it a name, uh, test box. Uh, your computer name will be test virtual box, that's fine. The name would be test, and here you can type the password. I'm just going to use the shorter password for now and hit continue. Now this process right here may take, uh, depending upon your uh, speed of the hardware, could take up to 15 minutes, maybe 30, maybe maybe less. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and come back when it's ready for the next step. Okay, so installation is completed. It's asking to restart, so I'm going to go ahead and click on restart now. So this time it should not pick up the ISO file. It should go straight into the Ubuntu. Let's see what it does. Make it a little bigger. Okay, it says uh, please remove the installation media and close the tray. Press enter. I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so it's on a logon screen, so I'm going to go ahead and type in my password. So 
so it should bring it up to the uh, what we call desktop in Windows world So there's your uh, dash home, your start bar right here, uh, and on the top up here, it uh, just like on Windows, it, this would be on the bottom right hand corner. The in Ubuntu, it's on the top, top right hand corner. And from here, you can uh, initiate the shutdown, log out, lock your screen, add printers update the software like this would be similar to Windows Update and in if you need to install any application uh, you would use either the Ubuntu uh, Software Center or you can do it through a command uh, through a terminal through a command prompt And it does come with the LibreOffice Writer, so you can. This is similar to Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint. And then, uh, if you want to look at the uh, some of the some of the settings, such as uh, system settings, it tells you right here. This is the first time it's opening, so it's just taking its time. This is where you would adjust some of the settings such as the network interface card or Bluetooth or power or printers. So this is it for uh, installing uh, Ubuntu on a Windows 7 virtual box. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you like my video go ahead and hit subscribe on the bottom. Thank you for watching and see you next time.